Hi, good morning, everyone. This is a re-recording of the um, housing development solicitation informational session that occurred um, uh, the week of February 13th. Um, the solicitation opened on Feb Monday, February 13th, and this um, webinar occurred on Thursday, February um, 16th. Um, today, we'll be going back over the slides that occurred on February 16th and um, going through the questions we received on February 16th. So I'm gonna share my screen and we will get started. And again, welcome to the 2023 Housing Development Solicitation Informational Session. In this meeting, we'll go over, uh, we'll introduce CED staff in a welcome and go over some background to this solicitation go over the application timeline. Then we'll go through the um, application requirements and actually walk through uh, Zoom grants, which is our uh, solicitation portal where you'll be able to apply and upload all uh, relevant documents. We'll walk through each type of funding source available as well as the scoring criteria for evaluation. We'll then read through the questions that were received on during the first informational session and, um, and uh, go through the answers there. Um, all, all of the questions have been compiled into an FAQ that will be posted online as well with this video and the slides. So first, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Max Holies, I'm the Manager of Housing Development and Policy on Ramsey County's Community and Economic Development Team. We are also joined here today by Jerrica Gomez, our um, multifamily specialist as well as Carmel San Juan, our intern. So thanks to Jerrica and Carmel for putting together this slide and helping with the coordination of this informational session. If you were looking for CDBG public services and facilities, that was held on uh, the morning of February 17th, and that will be posted online as well. Um, we'll put that um, chat in the, uh, we'll put that website in the chat in, um, in case you're interested in that piece as well. The application will, as I said earlier, the application will be hosted on Zoom Grants. Um, Zoom Grants is a free application software and we'll show you how to kind of log into that. It's really easy to log in. And then we can see what it looks like from an applicant's perspective. So just a little bit of background, why are we doing this solicitation? So through 2020 to 2021, Ramsey County established the Economic Competitiveness and Inclusion Plan. This was the plan that lays out how CED and other um, departments like Workforce Solutions should invest in our communities. This involved a long community engagement process, and it really established one of the main strategies here was it established um, rental housing affordable to those at 30% AMI as a major county priority. So this is a really foundational document for the solicitation. Another um, key document is the Deeply Affordable Housing Initiative. So when the city of St. Paul and Ramsey County received American Rescue Plan Act funding, we joined a planning and engagement partnership and really about how do we wanna invest the money that our respective city councils and county boards put towards deeply affordable housing uh, from the American Rescue Plan Act. So this is a really key document and we met with a lot of um, homeless service providers and other agencies that um, help people facing housing instability because uh, this is a key resource to kind of fill in those gaps. And then thirdly, CED has an equitable development framework. I would say this is, um, this is inspired by the um, development scorecard, whether that's the Alliance or Westside Community Organization or other regional partners here. Um, this is inspired by that. And we use this as one of our, um, in a bridge version of this as one of our attachments for developers to fill out. So we'll get into that as we talk about required materials. Another background, um, previous solicitations. Um, so we've, this is our fourth and final solicitation that includes American Rescue Plan Act. Dollars. Um, in fall 2022, we had a solicitation that included the um, affordable housing development readiness solicitation. This included $6.75 million of awards, and you'll be able to find those uh, information, that information online as well. The um, solicitation that this um, 2023 solicitation is going to be most similar to is our spring 2022 inclusive housing development solicitation. So the total awards for that solicitation, and this gives you a sense of how much how many resources we're working with for this solicitation is was $24.195 million. This included about 18 projects 
And so awards vary from about a couple hundred thousand dollars to many millions of dollars there. So this is important um, to kind of review this because Ramsey County does not announce how much funding is total available and we, it is really application based. And so it really depends on the quantity and quality of the applications we receive to um, release the dollars. If there's not enough quality or eligible um, applications, the money could be held for another solicitation round. Um, and then I wanted to show you some of our website navigation. So I'm gonna pause here and show you some of our key web pages that help you kind of navigate this system and some of the resources available. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen. And I'm going to pull up my internet browser, just one second. Okay. Okay, here we are in Chrome. Um, and so I just want to show you some key pages here. I often use ramseycounty.us slash affordable housing as kind of my landing navigation page for Ramsey County um, materials related to affordable housing. So it'll tell you more about the deeply affordable housing uh, infrastructure initiative. It has links to AMI for the region, as well as the ECI plan that was previously discussed. So those will be important to review as you develop your materials as well. Um, it tells you more about the partnership with the city and specifically on ARPA dollars. And then it opens up to this housing solicitation. This is where you can view um, housing investments is where you can view previous um, investments made. And then finally, you can read the engagement report of the deeply affordable housing initiative. So let's start here on current solicitations. So this is our housing development solicitation. Another way to get here is you can type Ramsey County US slash housing solicitations. It'll take you to the same page. It's just an easier URL as well. So ramseycounty.us slash affordable housing or ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations. So here on the solicitation page, you'll see the funding sources that are available. American Rescue Plan Act, Housing Redevelopment Authority Levy, Home Investment Partnerships Program, and Community Development Block Grant. And again, for the Community Development Block Grant, please note that public facilities, programs, and um, services are in another solicitation. So who can apply? So you have to be a developer, whether that's a governmental, nonprofit, or for-profit developer, that's who can apply here. You'll then see that um, it lets you know about the application itself. So this will take you to Zoom grants. This is where information about the informational meeting will be uh, posted. So we'll have um, this recording, the slide deck, and the FAQ will be posted here. And then we'll have funding award decisions here. So this is our timeline for that. So May 9th for our HUD awards and May 16th for our other awards. We then get into eligibility requirements and scoring criteria, which will be more in depth um, in other areas as well, including the solicitation notice. This is a key document here. Um, it basically goes over all the information we're going over today, but in more detail. So this will be really important to read as you develop your uh, um, your application for this funding. Okay, so I'm gonna go back one page here and then we show you affordable housing investments. So here you can click by solicit previous solicitation and you can see um, past awards. So for spring 2022, as we know that solicitation is closest to this one, you can learn about previous awards. So in that solicitation, there was more funding available um, as well as it tells you all the different awards uh, by project name, the developer, the location, uh, the um, award amount, the funding source, and then the number of units total, as well as the um, number of units uh, affordable at 30% of the area median income. So as you put together your ask and think about all of your sources and uses, you can think about um, the projects that already occurred here from last year. So these projects are in various states of either construction, planning, 
who are planning. And so we've seen some of these projects are almost to completion and some of them are just getting off this ground. And then each uh, type of funding source has a different kind of recommended um, um, amount of time that we would like uh, kind of spending requirements. So um, key is probably as 12 to 18 months is key, sometimes 12 to 24 months. Um, funding can be available right after the um, award is um, uh, approved by the county board. Um, and that might differ uh, by funding source. So, um, but we can come to that as um, after you get through the application process and the award process, um, then we can start on our closing process. So we'll work with you on that as well. So those are some of the key web pages here. Um, I'm going to go back to my slide deck. Um, and we'll keep going from there. Okay, so again, the ramseycounty.us slash affordable housing or ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations will be your helpful pieces um, online, uh, both for kind of a repository of information as well as looking at past awards. And a helpful hint, the spring 2022 inclusive housing solicitation is the solicitation from the past that is most similar to the one we're about to dive into. And you can see that uh, all the projects there. So our 2023 timeline, um, this opened on um, February 14th on Valentine's Day. I think I said February 13th earlier. Actually opened on Valentine's Day uh, application. Uh, so all of the materials are now available on Zoom grants. We then hosted our first informational session on February 16th and, uh, and uh, the application will close on March 14th at 4 p.m. So all of your materials will need to be in by then. Any materials that are submitted after the 4 p.m. deadline will not be counted for evaluation and scoring. On March 15th through April 17th, CED staff and their partners will review um, the solicitations for eligibility and then they will score them. Um, after scoring, there might be follow-up questions or we might reach out to partner agencies that are also participating in the pro uh, project, whether that's a local city or the state of Minnesota or the Metropolitan Council. On um, March 4th or the 11th, will um, applicants will be notified of the, if they were recommended for an award. On May 9th, um, projects recommended for a CDBG or home award will go to the HRA. On May 16th, uh, projects recommended for American Rescue Plan Act uh, funding will go to the county board. And then on May 16th, uh, projects recommended for Housing Redevelopment Authority will go to the HRA. Um, after that, as soon as we receive that resolution from the chief clerk, we will send that out and we can kind of begin the next step of the relationship, which is more on uh, project implementation and closing. So now we're gonna get into the requirements of the um, solicitation itself. These are our pass fail requirements. If you do not meet these, well, these things, um, you will not be determined, you will not be eligible. So we'll go over this piece. This is really key here. So there are two eligible types of housing in this solicitation. One is permanent general occupancy rental housing with a minimum of five units and or permanent supportive housing for low to moderate income renters with a minimum of five units. Um, there has been, um, since our FAQ, there has been one addendum to this um, requirement. And that is that um, if someone is proposing owner occupied housing over five units, um, then that kind of counts as that permanent general occupancy. So this is not, uh, funding is not available in the solicitation for shelter or transitional housing. It really has to be permanent occupied housing. Everyone who would in the um, example, it's not time limited. Um, there are, um, it's not time limited, everyone has their own lease, all of that. Um, the other eligible housing type, so this is an or, so if you're not doing occupancy rental, you can uh, request a pool of funds for the acquisition of existing housing units. This is for affordable home ownership, and so it has to be low to moderate income residents and the eligible um, agencies that can apply for acquisition funds uh, will be nonprofit or city partner agencies. This funding will have a um, stricter spending deadline 
and we will be requiring um, spending um, of the acquisition funds by um, February 2024. And then here we have an and. So one of those two housing types, and you have to provide all required materials by the application deadline. So here are those kind of required materials that you have to turn in by the deadline. Applications will not move on to scoring without the following required materials submitted in Zoom grants. We'll go over Zoom grants in one second. Um, one is the multifamily workbook. This is that spreadsheet that those who have applied for Minnesota Housing or City of St. Paul funds in the past um, are familiar with. This includes, um, it's about a seven um, worksheet Excel um, spreadsheet. And it includes all of those things like sources and uses and um, revenue and cash flow and performa projections and those uh, many pieces that um, help a funder better understand a project. So this is a required material uh, for all uh, multifamily projects. Um, we expect to see this completed in, in a way that makes sense. This will be underwritten by Ramsey County staff and their third party consultant, Baker Tilly. Um, for family, uh, for applicants, um, requesting um, acquisition funds. Please fill out the multifamily workbook to the best of your ability. It might not be a perfect match since you're uh, um, requesting acquisition funds for owner-occupied housing. Um, but please uh, fill out the number of units and the sources of uses that you believe that um, represent your project as well. It is a requirement. So um, even if it's for that acquisition area, if it's not a good fit, you must um, submit. Um, the other three uh, requirements are uh, attachment A, which is uh, the Ramsey County Equitable Development and Livability question. So you must answer each one of the questions and uh, attach that as well. So that, that is based off of Ramsey County's Equitable Development Framework. And this is kind of the question form of that that associates with housing development. Um, you will see pieces in there around um, community participation, thinking about um, past and present uh, communities, as well as sustainability, um, diverse in workforce and hiring. So we wanna hear about how you're thinking about how your project fits into the broader context of our diverse uh, communities here in Ramsey County. The second attachment is our acknowledgement letter um, this, and our lobbying certification, certification form. So those are both required um, and they will, will require your signature. So now I wanna give you an application walkthrough on Zoom grants. So to get there, I'm going to uh, go back to ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations. And then that will try to channel us back to Zoom grants and we'll start from there. So I'm gonna stop sharing my PowerPoint and we will share the, uh, the page again. Okay, so here we are at um, ramseycounty.us slash affordable housing. Um, I'm actually gonna go to ramseycounty.us slash housing solicitations. And then um, I'm going to press student grants where the application is. Uh, application is Linkus. So, okay, so this is Zoom Grants. This is what it looks like when it's not logged in, when you're not logged in. When you're not logged in, you can still see the description, the requirements, required materials, um, kind of a lot of the information of the web, uh, of the solicitation itself. But to actually apply, you need to um, create an account. This account is free, this requires your email and a password. Um, so I'm gonna go into my kind of dummy account, which is with my personal email. Um, and then we can go through the solicitation. So this is what it looks like from an applicant's view once you're logged in. So um, I'm gonna hide everything and I kind of reopen them as we go through it. So first you can see all of the open Ramsey County solicitations. So you see the Ramsey County Housing Development Solicitation. And then you see the 2023 CDBG Public Services Programs and Facilities Solicitation. So those might be interest, interesting, uh, both of you. So I'm gonna, Return to my application, and then you can uh, show the description. So this gives you a general overview of what the description of the solicitation is. Um, it, 
And this is also in the solicitation notice that's online as well. So uh, multiple places where you can see this information. Um, then I'll show you the requirements of the solicitation. So as stated before, the eligible housing types are either that kind of multifamily permanent housing uh, for low to moderate income residents, or a pool of funds for the acquisition of existing housing units for affordable home ownership. Um, and then you need to require, you need to provide all required materials by the deadline application, which is March 14th at 4 p.m. The required materials are the multifamily workbook, um, the attachment A, the responses to the Ramsey County Equitable Development and Livability questions, attachment B, the acknowledgement letter, and attachment C, the lobby certification form. We also have a long list of materials that are um, technically optional. Um, they, they, if submitted, they may help in, um, in your scoring, but they are not required because um, every project is a little different. And so, um, not all of the materials will look the same for each project. Um, but I can give you a sense of which ones out of this optional list are particularly important. One, we have the project description. That is your chance to um, kind of in an, um, as lengthy or as short as you want, describe the project at hand. Um, and you can attach that as a word or PDF and that gives us a sense, a better sense of how you're describing your project. So project description. The development and financing team. Um, this will be really key as well as we think about organizational capacity. Who's on your team? Do you have all the pieces put together already? Um, who, are, who are other finance partners? Um, those types of pieces are going to be important here. The project schedule will help us determine if, um, if your kind of project feasibility is, um, if your project is feasible in this year, if you want to wait a couple more years, um, uh, for a funding award. So um, project schedule is key. And then a lot of these other ones are um, could be in your multifamily workbook. A lot of developers actually save each page of the multifamily workbook as a PDF as well to kind of make sure that it's easy for us to click around. So that's important. Um, things that might also be important, um, architectural drawings may help us get a better sense of this, um, how it fits in with the local community, the scope of work, uh, photos and projects at the site. Um, I'll help us see where this will fit into the community. Um, this is important, evidence of site control. So um, evidence of site control is often required for funding. Um, it's not a pass-fail requirement because of the acquisition piece of this. You might not have the property yet, but you're going to be pursuing it. Um, but it's going to be really important to demonstrate that you have site control. Um, site control could include um, the deed to the property, a purchase agreement. Um, there's many ways to determine that you have site control or near site control. Um, another piece that we get a lot of questions on is the market analysis plan. So that um, that is often requ a requirement of other funding sources. For us, it's optional. It gives it helps uh, make sure that in practice, it helps make sure that the developer um, has a product that can actually is needed in the market that they're building in and um, that there is the demand for that type of unit. Um, in Ramsey County, we have such a housing shortage that this is more of an optional piece because we know that almost um, any low to moderate income rental property will um, be filled in as, the, as there are, is the demand for um, rental housing right now. Um, and then going down to number 23 and 24, um, zoning and land use documentation for the local municipality. Is this property zoned in the correct way? If it's not, what is your path to get there? Um, do you have support from the city? Do you have support from the local community? Um, these kind of things will be key to, for us to determine if the project is feasible. Um, different funding sources will require a resolution of uh, support from the local municipality. Um, this um, this is um, can be turned in after the um, so you can pursue that after the solicitation closes, but it, um, you would not get any scoring points for that as we go through the scoring criteria. Um, so it's key that you're already working with the city, that they know about your project, that this um, that you do believe that you will get approvals for this project. Um, those are all really important here.
Um, so those are all of the required materials. So I'm gonna hide that now. And now I'm gonna show our funding criteria. So this is really how we're gonna score. And so this directly connects to the application materials. And so you'll be able to see what you would need to kind of meet these um, different scoring criteria. We score in four categories. One is project feasibility and financial capacity. Two is organization. Three is strategic and selection priorities. And four is affordability. So we'll go through those. Um, so in project and financial capacity, um, again, this is really going to be based on the cost of your development. So what is your total development cost? What is our subsidy within that total development cost? And what is your cost per unit? So those will be things that we're be think about there. And then we'll make sure um, points will be available um, for those that have municipal support. And um, yeah, that'll be key to scoring as well. But the mo majority of the points in this category are um, for that kind of cost estimate. Um, this is also where we would determine is the housing economically viable? Um, we think about is there a service model if you're proposing permanent supportive housing? Um, we think about um, are you connected to a development project, um, whether that's like a shared parking structure or a master plan or anything like that? Um, are you part of that and which costs are associated with that broader development? Um, demonstrating site control will be key here to determine project feasibility, as well as um, our eligibility determination, financial capacity, and the letter of support from the local municipality. So these all fall into project feasibility and financial capacity. Organizational capacity. This is a, uh, sorry, one thing up here. Project feasibility and financial capacity is 30 points. There's a total of 100 points available across all four scoring categories. Project feasibility and financial capacity is 30 points. Organizational capacity is worth 10 points. Um, and this is really to see, this is a more qualitative um, scoring category. And it is to make sure that you um, have the capacity to complete the project that you're proposing. So who is on your team and what is your strength and experience in housing development? Um, what partner agencies or um, consultants are you working with to make sure that you successfully complete the proposed project? Um, have you completed similar projects? Um, or have you been involved in what roles at other projects? So we wanna see uh, kind of how you plan to complete this project and with whom. Um, then we go to strategic and selection priorities. And so this is really about how does this connect to those key documents that I talked about in the beginning uh, framework and the Deeply Affordable Housing Initiative Engagement Report. So how do you make sure that your application connects to county priorities? And our county priorities are laid out in these three documents. Um, so it's really important to really spend time thinking about the proposed project and how it connects or adjusting your proposed project to make sure it connects to Ramsey County priorities. This, pro this scoring category is worth 30 points. Again, this is a qualitative um, scoring category. And so this is where uh, staff get into discussion around um, racial equity, as well as um, how your project connects to racially and ethnically diverse communities. The last category is a quantitative category. It's called affordability. Um, so you, um, we'll be seeking projects that um, have 30% um, have AMI and 50% AMI uh, units and then those will be higher scoring units. If you're seeking, um, if if your project may include ARPA dollars, you need to have a minimum of 10% of the total units need to be available to renters at 30% AMI. Um, so ARPA, as we get into funding sources, we'll talk about how ARPA is our biggest source. So it does help projects uh, receive funding if they meet that 10% um, of total units at 30% AMI. Um, Again, 30% MI units get points, 50% AMI units can get points. And then we're also looking for, are you able to maintain that 30% AMI affordability without external subsidy? So um, those are projects that are able to include those units without an additional voucher source or additional housing support revenue source. Um, projects can include those sources, of course, but um, and we encourage those as well. There is just this um, scoring category for uh, 
units that are able to move on without those additional sources, because we do know that the, that requires additional resources from other agencies. And so um, again, the scoring criteria and points are available here. So this is also available in the solicitation notice online. So um, please review that. Um, now we'll go to our different, this is kind of like our project library. So it's called resources for solicitation. And it has attachment A, attachment B, this uh, final solicitation notice in the multifamily workbook. So you can go through these uh, materials and um, you'll need to download them, fill them out, and then reattach them in your application itself. And then as we go to the application itself, there's the eligibility determination. So it asks you a series of questions around eligibility. Then it goes through application questions. And this is mostly around, um, this can complement your uh, narrative match um, to the application. And um, it asks about any conflicts of interest and um, felonies associated with the project. You'll then um, develop a, your um, primary contact. Anyone can be the primary contact, whether it's consultant or the developer. Uh, it'll be the person that we will communicate with. Um, so that's important moving forward. And then you have where you attach the documents. You can see that multifamily workbook attachment A, B, and C are all required, and that uh, the rest are optional, and it goes down the list here. So that is the um, solicitation itself. Um, and this is, again, again online. It's on Zoom Grants. It's a free account, and it lays out a lot of what's available in the solicitation notices as well. So I'm going to stop sharing that and then um, share, uh, go back to the PowerPoint presentation. This is where we will go through each type of funding source now. Um, our first funding source that we'll talk about is the uh, Housing Redevelopment Authority Levy. So this is our broadest source and has the least amount of um, uh, funding um, uh, kind of red tape for a better lack of a better term. Um, it can be used for acquisition, development, the conversion of a commercial building to residential or the rehab of affordable housing, uh, of an existing affordable housing building. So again, as we discussed in scoring, priority is given to projects with units targeting low to extremely low incomes. So that's that 50% to 30%, but there is no additional targeting uh, besides the scoring that we went over here. So it can be anything low to moderate income in proposals. This can be structured at the discretion of Ramsey County staff as either a grant or a loan. And um, it would require affordability declaration of 30 years. Um, the community development block grant is another funding source. Um, this is HUD funding. It has a geography restriction and that can only be used in suburban Ramsey County communities outside of the city of St. Paul. So when in doubt, um, look up where your project location is. Many Ramsey County suburban addresses accidentally still kind of say they're in St. Paul and when you look at Google Maps or something. So really make sure you know what city your application is in. Um, just going back to HRA, this can be used countywide, city of St. Paul or uh, suburban Ramsey County. CDBG, suburban Ramsey County only, and can be used to um, acquire or rehab affordable rental housing. It can be structured at a, as a grant or a loan at the discretion of Ramsey County staff. And the, it has a, a minimum affordability declaration of 20 years. Again, CDBG has other uses. And um, if you're looking for public services or public facilities that are non-residential or in that kind of shelter or transitional housing area, um, please look to the public services and public facilities um, uh, solicitation. Next, we have home funding. Again, this is for suburban Ramsey County communities only. It's for the new construction of permanent rental housing. So CDBG is rehab, home is new construction. And it's often used for pre-development costs that is provided at closing. So this could include the legal consulting, the architectural fees, engineering fees. You just have to provide invoices that support that documentation. Um, again, the CRF, CFR is kind of that HUD legal language. You can copy and paste that online and search there. And home is interesting. It has its own kind of um, rental limits. And, um, and you'll have to look up how that affects your projects. There's something called low home and high home. 
um, and there's different depending on um, the amount of funding you're requesting. Um, and if you are awarded home funding, we'll have to talk about the number of units that supports and um, the uh, affordability levels there. It's a little bit of a complicated funding source, but we'll walk through that again if um, you are recommended for a home award. Home funds will be structured as a loan and the minimum affordability declaration will be at least 20 years. Again, more information can be found online on the HUD exchange or by looking up the specific CFR. Our biggest source is American Rescue Plan Act. So the County Board in 2021 put $37 million of American Rescue Plan Act funding towards affordable housing. Um, we've already gone through three solicitations. So we are hoping that this is our last solicitation with American Rescue Plan Act. Um, this includes the eligible uses include the acquisition, development, conversion, and rehab of affordable housing. And um, we can structure, we will structure that as a deferred loan. So that's a loan that you'd pay back at the end of the loan term, or you would refinance and extend the affordability of the loan. Um, so probably, let's say it's a 30 year loan. So you would, um, that would be deferred on, um, until you, let's hopefully extend the affordability past that point. Uh, the minimum uh, affordability declaration is 30 years. That is um, federal, or that is a federal requirement of these funds. So that is non-negotiable. And at least 10% of the units must be affordable to households at 30% AMI. That is a local uh, Ramsey County, uh, City of St. Paul uh, request um, and requirement. Um, and so please consider that as this is our biggest funding source available. Um, And again, ARPA can be used countywide. There's no geography restriction like our HUD funding. So in our scoring criteria, we have, again, we've got, we've got over this, we have our project feasibility and financial capacity. So this is really about the project cost and the subsidy per unit, the subsidy of the project. Is it cost effective? So we have a range of costs there that we, do, we deem cost effective. And then if you have a permanent supportive housing model, we'll go over your service model, as well as the letter of support from local municipality. Points are available for that letter of support. Organizational capacity. Um, this is that qualitative related to housing experience, as we discussed prior. And then affordability, again, this, this is a quantitative one. So a minimum, if you are hopefully seeking ARPA, uh, ARPA dollars, which is our biggest um, funding source, you need 10% of your units to be affordable at 30% AMI. Uh, affordable to, and then the other scoring includes affordability to renters at 30% AMI and affordability to renters at 50% AMI. Um, you may offer and maintain um, additional points would be available for if you're off, able to offer and maintain 30% AMI affordability without external subsidies like vouchers or housing support. And then of course you can have units in any of these funding sources above, um, above these 30 and 50% AMI. Uh, for some services, you could include market rate and then include 30% AMI units to kind of um, include some government subsidy. You could include 80% AMI units across these sources. Um, they just will not score as highly. Um, so you'd like to see that mix of income, and um, but you do not receive points for um, AMIs higher than 50% AMI. And again, we've already discussed the alignment with strategic and selection priorities. So that is the end of the presentation. I'm going to um, open the FAQs from our last meeting. Um, and let me navigate to that. Great. So we received a question on, um, for the solicitation, are there funds for new construction home ownership? The answer is no, the new construction of single family homes is not an eligible use. However, funds have been made available for nonprofit and government agencies for the acquisition of single family homes. These funds um, um, these funds need to be expended by March 1st or in February really of 2024. So new construction of homes is not eligible, but the acquisition of owner occupied homes is eligible. That makes sense. This will also be posted online in writing. What is the required timeline to expend funds? There are four different, so there are four different funding streams here. Each funding stream will have its own expenditure deadlines, whether that's a federal timeliness spending required by Ramsey County, um, 
and we can get into that if awarded um, funding. Ramsey County recommends that all projects are completed within 12 to 18 months of an award where the applicant, uh, and by completed, I mean closed upon, or the applicant may, may risk losing their award amount for the project. So we always wanna keep in touch if we think that the timeline is gonna kind of drag past that 12 to 18 months for closing. The next question we received in the chat was uh, American Rescue Plan, for American Rescue Plan Act, can units with project-based vouchers count towards the 10% of affordability? at 30% AMI? And the, the answer is yes, this is allowed. Um, we wanna make sure that there's a, um, a net um, gain of at least 10% of, the, of units to affordability. So for example, let's say you have a building that's all project-based vouchers currently, but there is no uh, declaration that declares some of those units at 30% AMI. If you were applying, we would want to uh, put a declaration that says at least 10% of those units that include project-based vouchers already, are now 30% AMI. In case they ever lose their project-based voucher, that one would revert to 30% AMI. Or if there's a, um, a resident for some reason who is not going to use a voucher. Um, and then the second one is that um, the other stipulation here is that no tenant is required to pay over 30% of their um, personal income towards housing in those units. So the rents have to be established at the 30% AMI unit, uh, AMI level, even if there's a voucher. And we'll check on that annually through a rent roll. So someone asked us to share the list of participants. If we can figure out how to download that, yes, um, we can share that online as well in that video. Uh, um, but if for some reason we're not able to download that, we're not gonna include that. Um, are there any significant differences in the application compared to the previous Ramsey County housing solicitation? So um, overall, it feels pretty similar, but there are some major differences again, and that's in the eligible activities. Um, we've changed those. We kind of narrowed those for this solicitation uh, um, to not include new construction of single family homes. But we had last year, so we had general obligation bonds as well as home ARP. Um, this year, we um, do not have general obligation bonds or home ARP, but we still have CDBG, home ARPA, and HRA. The next question in the chat, um, can you confirm that this is a... Um, Confirm that as an applicant, we do not request or decide which money we'll get, we will get if awarded. The information will be provided by the county. Yes, that is correct. So this is a one door solicitation. You will not apply for a specific source of funding. Ramsey County staff will connect your eligible project if it is uh, scores highly enough and moves on to a uh, uh, recommendation for approval. We would then connect your project to a specific funding source. So. Um, so yes, you do not need to worry about which funding source you would be applying for. Are the funding source amounts available for this solicitation available? Um, again, this is determined upon the eligibility and quality of applications that we receive. Um, so we do have uh, funding that is similar to the 2022 inclusive housing development solicitation. So in that kind of $20 million range total. But if we do not receive eligible or quality uh, applicants, we can always postpone that funding to a future solicitation. So it really is dependent on the quality of the applications that you receive. We have a question here on deferred loans. So does deferred loan mean we have to pay it back over what timeline? So yes, the deferred loan um, would be required to be paid back at the end of the loan term with a percentage of interest. Usually this interest, depending on the, if it's private or nonprofit, would be zero to 2%. Um, and this coincides with the maturity of the loan. So if it's a 30 year loan, then the deferment lasts that long. Um, but again, when we're hoping this is the case, we'd want to extend affordability for another 30 years after that. And maybe then you don't have to pay back the deferred loan and it just gets deferred again for 30 years. So that's a decision that's made um, throughout the life of the loan. So will any of the ARPA funding be included in the summer? application for uh, emerging developers. So we will be having a second um, application period in the summer, and that's gonna be for new developers, emerging developers, um, and that's gonna be with HRA funding. So we're looking to use all of our ARPA funding in this broader um, housing development solicitation. And then for our emerging developers, so those will be project uh, developers who have had five or less projects completed so far, 
or that have five or less financial stakes in projects right now, as well as kind of that eligibility for single family development. Um, um, that will be HRA rather than ARPA because ARPA is more flexible and is a better fit for emerging developers. Is there scoring for non-rental homeownership acquisition rehab? So you will, if you apply in that kind of homeownership acquisition fund category, you'll only be scored with other homeownership acquisition projects. You will not be scored against a multifamily project, but we'll be using the same four scoring criteria. Um, we imagine that homeownership acquisition um, projects will receive lower on affordability because uh, most homeownership kind of falls in that 50 to 80 percent range rather than that 30 and 50 percent range. So you may see that you have a lower score on affordability, but because you're only getting scored with similar projects, um, that should not affect your uh, outcomes there. Um, can ARPA funds be used for new construction in the city of St. Paul? Yes, ARPA and HRA can be used for new construction in the city of St. Paul. Again, review the solicitation notice. It'll tell you all, all about each funding source. If we for partial we have to have the rest of the funding sources confirmed or underdeveloped, it would be in a very rare occasion that Ramsey County would fully fund your project. You will need to look for other funding sources. So often that requires a private loan. That requires other government sources, whether that's Minnesota Housing or a local city. Um, so you're going to have to think about what your other sources are. And yes, in your multifamily workbook, you're going to want to list all the sources that you're either pursuing or have already been um, committed. Um, you're going to want to list, um, if you're working with a private bank, you're going to, in that kind of development and financing team, optional material, you're going to want to list who that is. We're going to want to see who your uh, loan provider is, or if you're pursuing tax credit, who your tax credit um, team is. So those are all pieces there. So very rarely would we um, fully funded development. So that's so asking for partial funding is kind of the way to go. Um, how many projects did you fund last year? Again, visit the housing and investment tab on ramseycounty.us slash affordable housing and then click on the 2022 spring solicitation and you'll see all the different awards there. I think it's about like 18. Uh, so those are all the questions we received in the chat. Um, and again, if you have additional questions, please reach out to Jerica Gomez and Max Holdison. I'm a Max Holdison. Jericho Gomez is our community development specialist, and we will triage those and uh, get back to you as soon as we can. Again, while the solicitation is open, and it is open, we can only talk about um, kind of specific uh, questions can only relate to kind of specific mechanisms about eligibility or um, application materials. We cannot talk about your specific project um, and we cannot take pitches about a specific project. So this is really uh, this is really any kind of communication between now and March 14th is just going to be about kind of the technical pieces of the application, not about um, not about um, your specific project and you kind of selling us our project. So we, we can't speak to that right now. Um, when in doubt, apply. The worst that can happen is that you spent time and um, you were determined non-eligible. We do not have an application fee, um, but I think it's really important to apply and kind of begin this kind of connection between Ramsey County and the local development community um, in the start to build that relationship. Even if you don't get funded this time, we know about your project, we'll know about good work and we'll wanna continue talking into the future. Um, so always recommend the application. Um, with that said, I thank you for your time and um, we will be posting this online as well as the slides and the FAQ. And um, yeah, there'll be more there. Thank you so much.